This was the moment that Kieran Trippier said no. May 28th, 2019, this is the day that Kieran Trippier, he got dropped from the England squad following a poor season with Spurs and less than a year after his heroics in Russia. But this moment was perhaps, I think, the most important thing to happen certainly to him, quite possibly to Newcastle and countless other Premier League players who, if they want to watch this video and take it on board, could have long-lasting effects that could echo for years. So when Trippier left Spurs in 2019, there wasn't much remorse shown to him by the Spurs fans. These are some of the comments that you saw when I had a little look and found some YouTube videos talking about the fact that he was leaving and going to Atletico Madrid. Average at best. The weakest point in the team. By Yedlin. What? So as I said, all of these comments were put out when Trippier left Spurs under somewhat of a cloud. Now, what I will say is that there were a lot of Tottenham fans that were gutted that he was leaving and felt that maybe he should stick around. So it wasn't all Spurs fans, but there was a bit of disappointment at the amount of hatred that he got as he'd been quite a stalwart for Tottenham during a good period. And if you fast forward to 2023, it's incredible. I bet these guys never thought they could look this wrong. But that, that my friends, is football. And that's the theme of today's video. So after being almost pushed out by Daniel Levy, Trippier began the rebuilding phase of his career, aged 29. And rebuilding... It isn't even the start of it because after a positive first season at Atleti featuring 25 times in La Liga, he establishes himself as one of Simeone's trusted players, something that he needed, I think, at a time where the belief from the higher ups in his last 18 months or so hadn't always been there. And this is something that Trippier has spoken about previously. Daniel was offering me to other clubs. I knew for certain that was happening, so I knew my time there must be up. I was playing for my teammates and the supporters, but I also knew I wasn't wanted. Now, belief is a word that gets touted around a lot in football, and the counter-argument is always, well, you get paid enough, don't you? So, you know, be a robot, don't it? And play bloody well. <laughs> That, as we know, is a pile of crap. Actually, no, sorry, could you bleep this, Finn? It's a pile of sh**. And here's a picture that proves it. Trippier played 28 times in Atletico's first title win. That's right, title win for seven years. And Simeone, in fact, pleaded with him not to go to Newcastle United when they came calling. But he did leave, and he became the first signing of the new Saudi ownership and possibly the most important signing a club has made since then. But this, of course, would never have happened if not for Eddie Howe. And during his managerial sabbatical, a lot of people don't know about this, he crossed paths with Trippier as he spent some time shadowing Simeone and Atletico Madrid. So this move to Newcastle was no fluke. It was down to three things in particular, in my opinion. Trippier's bravery to try a new league, be open when not many English players do so, or certainly didn't at the time, and especially more experienced players. And Trippier's willingness, which is the second thing, I think, to learn even at the age of 29, have that openness. It's well documented that Trippier would stay behind for an hour after every training session to learn from Simeone. And then finally, the third piece of it, finding a new layer in terms of leadership and that ruthless character, maybe that more of a, a stony feel to his leadership at Letico, and it led to him becoming what he is now for Newcastle. Now take a second and think about the present day and the way that we look at Kieran Trippier, because now we're wondering if there is any debate over Kieran Trippier not being the best right back in the league right now. And I'm fully aware that Trent is a very good right back, but he's playing in all sorts of different positions right now. But in terms of an out and out right back with high levels of consistency in the Premier League, the stats back up that Kieran Trippier is the best right now. Would we have said that in 2019 when he made his way out of the Premier League? I'll leave that debate, by the way. Trent versus Trippier. Who's the better right back? Let me know in the comments down below which one would you take for your team if you had a cup final the next day. Now, we're going to show you some of his in-game brilliance. But before that, let's just take a second to appreciate his stats right now and how ridiculous they are. He's got six assists in nine appearances so far, and that makes him joint top in the league for assists alongside Pedro Neto. Well done, Pedro, by the way. Mo Salah is also the only player, nine, to create more big chances than Trippier this season, who is on seven. But when you dig a little deeper, you begin to understand how prolific in chance creation Trippier truly is. He has become a monster. Where he sits in the table, I think it's vastly, vastly impressive because Trippier has created a total of 43 shot-creating actions this season, which sees him fourth in the league for this metric. Now, look at the players that he sits above, too. Saka. 
Odegaard, Rashford, Salah and Foden. All heavily attacking players who play higher up the pitch generally, who aren't out and out defenders. Now, he may have played a few more minutes here and there than some of these guys. But as I say, he is a defender for crying out loud. The counterpoint when looking at a right back or a defender and deciding if they're good or not is that defenders should defend. And we sometimes see the defensive numbers take a hit to facilitate such attacking output. But with 2.91 tackles and interceptions per 90, he sits slightly above average when it comes to this metric alongside his fellow fullback peers. But his numbers just don't tell us the full story. And we're going to tell you exactly what it is using the beloved tactics board or the screenshot board let's call it this time or if there's a better name for the screenshot board could you let me know in the comments down below because i've got to be honest screenshot board it's not sexy thanks for watching the content guys it means so so much and also a massive thank you to today's partner for today's video lightyear which is an investment app with over 3,500 stocks etfs and recently launched money market funds what's so cool about lightyear is that they give all users a multi-currency account and besides investing you can also earn 4.5 percent interest on your uninvested British pounds and USDs accounts and 3.25% on your Euro account. So right, if you want to save some quids, Lightyear charges only a flat 0.35% FX fee for transferring money from one account to another. And thanks to their multi-currency account, you don't have to pay FX fee for each buy and sell trade. What I think is great about Lightyear is that they have a transparent low fee pricing and they don't charge for investing in ETFs. They've just added 400 new US stocks and are constantly adding more. If you want to check it out, go to the link in the video description right now or use my code James to get $10 worth of a fractional share and start investing from just one pound. And I must mention that this section of the video includes financial promotions and both Lightyear and I want to emphasize that when investing, your capital is at risk as the value of your investments may go up as well as down. Thanks for listening. His in-game impact, let's talk about that because before we get into the nitty gritty defensive stuff, we need to appreciate how intelligent Trippier's movement and understanding is and that his creativity numbers don't stem from his technique alone. The thing about Trippier for me is that he's, it's the decisions, great decisions all the time, great clarity all the time, which is great for a manager and it's great for a team's overall play. And so sometimes, and we're going to show you some of these examples, both defensively and offensively, doing something earlier is better than having three yards extra pace, if that makes sense. Because what's in between your ears is still everything. If what's in between your ears is that little bit quicker than the rest. Seeing the game, reading the game, having great decisions and making them quickly. That is what Trippier is f***ing brilliant at. So this is from the game against Crystal Palace and actually this screenshot's a second late if I'm honest because what's so incredible as I've spoken about just a second ago is making decisions, making decisions quickly because Kieran Trippier is here and he's already on his bike. If you actually go back one second more and I think the time's important, we'll show you two screenshots and how they're imp so important they are. 32 minutes 54, actually he was here, you know, a second before because he makes a run so quickly because we wanted to illustrate that the ball is on its way to Jacob Murphy. So if we go back and start this again, what happens is Anthony Gordon, who is right here, he gets on the ball and plays the pass. And so if you think, think a second back, a second back, he's got the ball. Trippier is here. And of course, Jacob Murphy is exactly where he is and the ball's back over there. So Kieran Trippier's ability to see what's happening here. And actually, importantly, actually, if you zoom in over here, you can see what's happening and the amount of joy that Newcastle get down the right hand side in terms of putting balls into the back post if you watch the game and watch the highlights you will see how influential that right hand side is but Kieran Trippier knows what's happening and he makes a decision quickly and he makes that darting run and it allows Newcastle to get into a position that they absolutely love which is having the ball in this area here when they have the ball there, they have two options. But without Kieran Trippier making that burst and making that burst as quickly and as early as possible, you don't get the overload. And the thing that's difficult for Crystal Palace is that Tyrick Mitchell, their left back, he has no time to think. He's got to deal with Jacob Murphy. He has to get close to him. He hasn't got time to deal with Trippier and Murphy. The Corey, I think that is there. He is out of position as well. And they're in all sorts of trouble. If we move it on one... What you'll then see is that 32-57 and 
Crystal Palace are in a world of trouble. He's already here. Actually, the pass is a little bit heavier than that. It ends up here and he's able to put a cross into the box. But it's too late for Crystal Palace. There's no way they're going to get there. And also Trippier, of course, with the intensity of his run, no one's going to catch him as well because Tyrant Mitchell is completely overloaded by Jacob Murphy. And even if we take that all away, the brilliance here is that Jacob Murphy, if he wanted to, he could cut inside himself. He could have made the cross himself to the back stick where they're looking for it as well. Or he could have played a short pass as well. But it's that brilliance and that quick thinking that makes it so hard and it drags Crystal Palace defenders out or any team time and time again. Kieran Trippier is not just your Gary Neville who's going to do those overlaps and hope that he gets the ball and he'll pop a cross in. He, his positioning is completely underrated as well. This is the game against West Ham and Kieran Trippier is not in your normal right back position. Look, if he wanted to be, and obviously the screenshot only allows so much space, but he could be out wide as a fullback. Or he could be bombing on or he could be in a safer position over back in that normal defensive position of a right back. But he gets into this half space. And the reason he gets into this half space is because it will hurt the opposition. And he's brilliant at it. And you can see that from the body language. If you have a look at the body language of long stuff he's on his bike of I presume that that's good actually I think it's Harvey Barnes he's on his bike Isak is looking to get in behind as well and the reason it's such a great tactical tool is for two reasons one you've got someone like Kieran Trippier who is good enough to play that pass into a very very difficult area here where the goalkeeper can't really come for it but more important than that West Ham generally here think they're okay they think they're safe because someone like Emerson if you look at him one by one, he thinks he's OK. He's not going to hurt me here. He's got no one to defend, so he thinks he, he's OK. Zuma thinks there's no one on their way in those attacking half spaces, and he thinks he's got Isak covered. The right back is alongside him. He's not having a look because he's on the blind side of him there. Sean Longstaff for James Ward-Prowse. Uh, I think this is four lands possibly. Forgive me if it's not. But he thinks he's OK, but he's actually getting sucked in by a different player here. And what it leads to is... One, two, and quite possibly Sean Longstaff picking up the scraps and a fantastic ball that will come in from Kieran Trippier. And allowing that to happen is something that's been going on for two years. And if you don't have Kieran Trippier, you don't do that. And if you don't do that, you don't create the chances that Newcastle consistently make every single game. No one seems to be able to stop them down that right hand side with him inside. Trippier averages 2.24 passes into the penalty area per 90 for Newcastle and this boils down to a combination of quality and being able to vary the runs that he makes and where he picks up the ball. Another facet of his play that doesn't get nearly enough credit is his role as a progressive passer and how that benefits the team as a whole. As I said, over 100 touches a game. You have players like that in a lot of teams now. And for Newcastle, it's Kieran Trippier and his ability to make a pinpoint pass here. This looks very tight and it looks like Crystal Palace feel pretty comfortable. And look how many lines that he takes out. And that's a big thing to think about when you're watching a game of football is who's taking a midfield out of the game. So you have your lines, right? So there's your midfield line. And if we start again, there's another line. And you want to get the ball to someone like Callum Wilson to hurt the opposition because you take out four players out of a game. And really, you would imagine Kieran Trippier is going to play a simple pass out wide or he might do a little bounce back pass or he might look to spread the ball, but he's not going to make his way through. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He is. He's going, to, he's going to make a pass because if we move it on one more, what's happened? <laughs> Kieran Trippier, you naughty boy. Kieran Trippier is making that pass. He's taking one, two, three, four, five, six players out of the game. And he's making a certain gay feel very, very uncomfortable right here as well. Because does he engage or does he get on his bike? And that all comes from who? Trippier. And if you have a look at where Longstaff, I think pretty sure this is Longstaff, and Joe Linton are able to be because of this pass, because of the trust on Trippier as well. It's through this pass alone that Newcastle now end up having, and you can't see one of the players, but a five on five situation in the final third with Murphy on the right wing too is out of shot. And this isn't a one off either. Trippier averages 7.65 progressive passes per 90 for Newcastle. And he is just a persistent progressor from deep and it gets forgotten about. He's so good. And the other thing, of course, defensively. 
He's also unrecognisable from what some Spurs fans were saying about him four years ago. They were talking about the mistakes that he was making. But this bit of play, it shows that he's really moved on from that. And again, decisions, quick decisions, that's what makes great players. And that's something that sometimes you can't see watching on the telly because you're following the ball a lot of the time. But when you're at a game and you see a player almost out of position because they understand what's going on and they sense the danger, this bit of play shows it absolutely brilliantly. He's not just an attacking, one-dimensional player. He's so much more than that. He's so much more capable of defending and he's quietly excellent at it as well. Now, firstly here, he's got his position against Aaron Ramsey. It's fantastic. It's fine. It's lovely. Here he is. He's set. He's solid. He's looking good. And actually, if anything, Ramsey's probably in a bad position, really, because he should come to the blind side. But he's engaging with him. So all is well for Kieran Trippier. He's comfortable and he's tight in his goal side, right? And he's between the attacker and the goalkeeper. Perfect. Now, the ball is here, as you can see. But what happens next shows you how aware he is in these situations. Let's move it on one. Because what happens is that Lascelles steps up. Let me show you Lascelles. Lascelles steps up. And so your normal back line, and generally you feel comfortable, and let's, let's imagine Lascelles is behind the striker here. What you want is your back four to be in a straight line. Now, of course, Dan Byrne can't get as tight because he's had to deal with the, the, you know, the ball being on the right-hand side. But generally, with someone stepping up, you leave space in behind. And it's important to understand that space. Let me just show that space a little bit better. And that's what teams want to do a lot of the time. They want to get in behind the opposition. So Kieran Trippier needs to understand this in a split second because Lestelle, as I say, steps up towards Brownhill and he leaves a gap in the back four. And the ball then gets played in behind and Amdouni is obviously going to be the favourite to get there. He looks like he's a free man and he looks like if you're going to get into a position, that is a pretty lovely position to be in to get yourself a goal, to get yourself a shot off. But what happens next, I just it's, it's wonderful. It's such good defending because Kieran Trippier from nowhere has already seen that this is happening. He's the most aware person on the pitch and he manages to put in an inch perfect clearance. And this is all down to his reading of the game and his anticipation. Two things that he allegedly didn't have at Spurs. So what I'm trying to say is, don't write players off. 